It's an example from Karma Kanda. Okay. And we are coming here up to the point <laughs> we went all the way from basic Karma Kanda selflessness up to the point when uh, Uddhava was shown the selflessness of the residents of Brindavan love. Right? He went all the way and he, he, he could see the difference in everybody's love. And now he went back to Mathura. <laughs> and just to compare uh, the, the difference <laughs> of level of selflessness, he's, you know, there are two quite, quite different examples of two different devotees, very good devotees of Krishna, Kupta, Trivakra, and uh, Another case. <laughs> so, uh, so that's that's important. So we are here at the verse number fifteen uh, and sixteen. I will just read them. Padavani jano apo garyan shirasham ripam adhani nam bari jigar kandasra pushanottamah. So the translation is like this, O King, 
that's the parting trip. O King, Akura bathed the feet of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram and then poured the bath water on his head. He presented them with gifts of fine clothing, aromatic sandalwood paste, flower garments, and excellent jewelry. After this, worshipping the two lords, he bowed his head to the floor. He then began to massage Lord Krishna's feet, placing them on his lap, and with his head bowed in humility, he addressed Krishna and Balana as follows. So the first prayer of Akura, we just read, Akura said, it is our good fortune that you two lords have killed the evil Kamsa and his followers, thus delivering a dynasty from endless suffering and causing it to flourish. And we came to the verse number 18. And um, that's right. That's right. Okay, so it's a very philosophical verse, so you have to be prepared to, uh, to the course of really serious philosophy. And still it's quite important. Uh, even in a dance canto, <laughs> you get very fundamental philosophy. I will read just a couple of times and then somebody will, whoever, maybe you want to read once and maybe somebody else. Yo vam pradana purusho jagat hetu jagan mayo bhavan bhuyam no vinkinche paramasti naka param Yo vam, let's do it together. Yo vam pradana purusho jagat hetu jagan mayo bhavan yana vinakinche Parasina Kaparam, Yovan Kadana Purusho, Kadaheti Jagan Maya, Bhavan Yamna Vina Kinshi, Parasina Kaparam. Yovan Kadana Purusho, Yovan Kadana Purusho, Kadaheti Jagan Maya, Kadaheti Jagan Okay, 
So we um, so that's quite an important uh, statement. Uh, we will read word by word of this particular prayer. And now, just a second, I'll try to find it. I have my glasses, I don't have my book. Anyway, I'll try to see if I can find it here. Oh yeah, maybe you can give me the book so I can um, read it. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh maybe I just I find it on the computer. It's okay. Um, so you one, you two, you two, a pradana purusha, the original persons, jagat of the universe. Here to the causes. Jagadmayo, identical with the universe. Bhavadhayan, then you. Na, not. Vina, apart from. Kinchit, anything. Param, cause. Asti, there is Nacha nor Aparam product. It's a translation uh, by beauty workers. You both are the original Supreme Person, the cause of the universe and its very substance. Not the slightest subtle subtle cause or manifest product of creation exists apart from you. Now the purport that was selected is after praising Krishna and Balaam having saved the dynasty, Akrura points out that the Lord actually has no mundane connection with any social or political institution. He is the original personality of Godhead, performing his pastimes for the benefit of the entire universe. So, now. We came from the verse number 15, so I will just quickly read the purport uh, by Vishwan Chakravarti. Uh, on those verses, just so that we don't go through the verses without proper words of the Acharyas. Akrura put all the water, Asarvapa, that he used to water their feet, meaning Krishna and Balaram's feet, on his head. Then, with both hands, he gently massaged Mrijam, their feet. You can just imagine <laughs> the ecstasy of Akrura. He's able to massage the feet of, of Krishna and Balaram. It's amazing. The next verse uh, doesn't help proper by Vishnu Chakravarti. Now, the verse number 18 does have Akura said, One, say, this dynasty of yours, Vam Idam Kalam, in the 17th verse. When you are the cause of the whole universe, Jagat had to, so it's not just one dynasty, you are the cause of the whole universe. Because the one Lord is appearing in two forms. He is addressed in the dual form, Yovam. Okay, that means the pair, Yovam. Uh, uh, so next, that's, that was Vishnu Chakravarti. Uh, it says, Yovam Iti, meaning in dual form. One Lord, Ekasya Ishvara Dvidra Vipravat, meaning the one Ishvara appears in two forms. And that's quite an important thing. Uh, we'll discuss it a little bit when we get to the philosophical part of it. 
Akura said. Thus, you alone are the Padana, and you alone are the Purusha. You alone are the cause. Jagat had to, and the effect, Jagat Mayu. By negation, Akura expresses the same idea. Without you, there is no cause and effect. So that's, uh, that's the commentary. I don't know if I can say anything more uh, without your blessings, but say um, I'll just give you a little bit of a context of how the whole narration develops. I mentioned something in the end uh, of the last chapter that Udo was given the glimpse of the selflessness of the residents of Rindau. Now, this story is usually quoted in different uh, contexts. Uh, it's quoted when it is the story of Kuja and whatever follows after that, quoted in the context of selflessness. Residents of Rindawa, and in particular Gobis, have an unusual, real love. It's not usual in the material world. Everybody here is a little bit selfish. They just want to have it for themselves. Now, they don't have that at all. So for Krishna, they can go to hell. It doesn't matter. For them, their own interest is not important. Now, this is one form of pure love. That is an example for us. That's why we follow the residents of Rindavan, not residents of Dura or Dvarak or anybody else. <laughs> They're completely selfless. Now, Acharya said that uh, Queens of Dwaraka had a 50 50 mix. You know, like uh, sometimes they would be the wanting Krishna for themselves and wanted Krishna to be happy. So, in the same time, they wanted to love and to be loved in an equal proportion. So, uh, gopis were selfless and residents of uh, Dwaraka were a little bit selfish. You know, like they want to have. Krishna's attention. <laughs> Krishna is for me. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, so that was a bit of a balance. Now, the story of Kudra, Kudra is quite important, and, and this, con con this contrast is shown to Uddhava, because Uddhava actually pre was present when Kudra, uh, actually, Krishna took Uddhava with him. <laughs> so he kept educating him uh, in the selflessness. So Kudra, uh, it looks like Kama, meaning uh, Kama Rupa Prema Bhakti. So that's the highest form of, but it was not. It was just right, uh, according to the Acharyas. And the, the magic of that was when, I mean, Krishna was having so much fun when he came to Mathura. He saw, you know, like in Vrindavan, they have everything nice, but in Mathura you have like, wow. King's clothes. That's real fun. <laughs> Let's get the king's clothes. And you don't want to give it to me. Okay, we'll give it. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, they say, wow, king's ointment and sandalwood. I like it. And he asked Kuja, so will you give it to me? And she looked at him and said, well, for you. <laughs> so she, she fell in love with just with the first look at him. And she was not just, uh, you know, she was not just with a bit of a, um, and she was not just a, she was a triple, how is it called, hand? Huh? triple hunchback, yeah, <laughs> so, so she had, she, uh, tri, uh, uh, her name means uh, bent in three places, so it was neck, the back, and the lower back. So all three places that you can have uh, that. And she was, uh, she was a personal servant, a contractor for Kamsa. <laughs> she was supplying him with ointments and you know, she was a king's uh, associate. And then she gives everything to Krishna, just like that. And Krishna reciprocating with this, just puts his fingers uh, on his toe, on her, on her fingers, and two fingers under her cheek, and they just like pulls her up. And she, here, here, she was cured. <laughs> and that's a beautiful girl. 
<laughs> for Krishna it was so easy. But, you see, despite the fact that she achieved uh, the form which was material form, she was not the follower of the selfless love of gopis. So all her associates, uh, when they saw her, they didn't get the Madhuri Ras, they got Hasya Ras. So they all stopped laughing when they were really happy. <laughs> That's a secondary Ras. But she got Madhuri Ras. But it was not selfless. It was selfish. Because it, you noticed in the previous verses that she wanted Krishna for himself, herself. You know, stay here. <laughs> don't go anywhere. You, well, you came here, okay. Now you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you don't mind. And now, that was different. Uh, from the gopi's love. So this is, the, you can say, you know, a premise that uh, there was going on with about sales gratification. And Kupja, of course, she was cleared from sense gratification. She was not cleared from egotistic love. So it was, uh, uh, it was <laughs> an interesting mix. And we are not following the footsteps of Kupja. We are not following the footsteps of Krura. There is a reason for that. Uh, but um, now, uh, the ointments, the, the royal ointments that she produced are being used by a crewer to worship the Lord in these verses. Same sandalwood paste. It's quite an expensive thing. You know? I mean, sandalwood wood is expensive. And this is actually the time of the year. I, I don't know if you've been in India at this time of the year. Every single Guru Kuli, every single uh, Mataji, and some Brahmachari, they go and grind this wood on a big uh, grinding mortars. You can say, I don't know if it's mortar, but in the grinding plates. And uh, you, make, you make this paste, which comes out little by little, little by little, a lot of work, you know, just to get the paste. But it's such an important thing for, I mean, in Bangladesh. Probably it's not as important, but in India, when it's hot, it's, it's the only thing that gives you a bit of release. <laughs> relief from that um, scorching heat. Now it's probably the hottest time in Vrindavan. It's like there's nothing hotter than now. It's like 64 degrees during the day or more. If you are going on the sun, it could be 80 degrees. It's like melting hot. You know, you can. You can cook. <laughs> Putting pots on the on the sand, you can cook easily. Uh, I mean, don't, don't try it at home. <laughs> but it's really high temperature. It's I mean, it's not a, as hot as probably as Rajasthan, but still very very hot. So uh, in those days, uh, or the paste was quite valuable, and it was a royal thing. See, that's when we worship Krishna, we worship him as lo a royal actually. We put crowns, we put chanton paste, we put beautiful jewelry. Uh, he likes that, you know, he likes that. It doesn't mean that it's against the Vindavan moon, but he, he likes that because, uh, oh, well, he obviously loves more uh, to be in Vindavan, but he will definitely love those royal ointments. And Kupja gave it to him, and uh, Akrura gives it to him. And, um, but now I'm coming to the point of separating um, two kinds. If we spoke about uh, selfless and selfish devotion, and now we have to separate two kinds of bhakti. Uh, devotion of the residents of Vrindavan, which is called Jnana Shunya Bhakti, meaning there is no ingredients of, of Jnana in their Bhakti. And regulated or Vaidhi style Bhakti that Akura expresses in his prayers the different kinds of bhakti. Now, Krishna is very pleased when Jokopis are joking with him, when Lalita is teasing him, when Madhumangal is uh, uh, poking him. <laughs> he likes that. When Akrura praises him, 
he likes the ointments. <laughs> so uh, for him, the prayer for us, the prayers of Guru are quite important because they show that he, uh, the Krishna, is the original Purusha. The in, in fact, there are two Purushas. The 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 or Adi Purusha Krishna and the first servant, the Bhagavan, the original, the Adi Sankarshan. So the form of the Sankarshan is always uh, supportive to the form of Vasudev. Uh, Sankarshan is manifesting itself him, himself as a dam, as a world, the tattva. And there is a link here between between Sankarshan and Balara, Adi Sankarshan, first Chaturvihi, second and Chaturvihi. And then Mahavishnu expansion that lays on a serpent. So now that serpent is also Sankasha. <laughs> and when the Lord, as a Vishnu, comes into the universe in the ocean of Garbadaka, then this Sankasha again manifests as Sheshana. And this Sheshana again is providing the, the full support because. Krishna doesn't touch the material world. He doesn't touch the matter. He doesn't touch the ocean of cause and effect. Uh, he is not touching anything in the material world. He sits on this expansion that touches it. <laughs> so that glance that he sends to the material world is also called Sankarsha, sometimes it's called Sadashiva. Actually, it's the same entity. Uh, Shiva and uh, all the forms of ruler, they come from the line of Sankarsha and they are in charge of the ego, this false ego of the material, in the material world, what, what's our trouble? You know, we don't have a trouble with money or food or air, we have everything, Krishna given us everything, but we have false ego, <laughs> no trouble, everything else is not trouble, I mean, of course. Uh, uh, the bigger trouble, yes, for somebody who has that, is that others also have, but that's a different story. But the, <laughs> but the idea is, uh, is that you have to, you have to take in that, in that account that Krishna is never alone. He always has an expansion. Now, Sankarsha is uh, also, the, the, the Purusha. The, when the Purusha is described in the Rig Veda, uh, uh, thousands of eyes, thousands of hands. It's actually a description of Sankarshan form. This is the actual Purusha of the Vedas. Uh, then, uh, Purusha in general, when, 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 uh, after having uh, uh, appreciation of Krishna's the fact that Krishna relieved them from Kamsa. Akru goes to the very, very basic philosophical thing that only very seniors and those who are part of the Vedic culture know. It's actually not very common. Uh, people in general, they don't talk about Purushas. Bhagavata talked about Purusha in the first canto, in the second canto, in the third canto, describes it in detail, and every time you know, people read it, they kind of go like, okay, what is this Purusha? <laughs> Purusha Shukta explain. What is Purusha Shukta? <laughs> I mean, this is so fundamental to the knowledge of the Vedas, description of Purusha, because this is the tasty core, the most uh, important part, Purusha Shukta, is the most important part of Rig Veda, and it's repeated again in other Vedas, because it's like, and that's where we get our Gayatri from, you know, uh, and the Gayatri describes that Purusha. So, so that, that's, that's where the Akura starts. He starts and he makes, uh, he comes, he, he'll come back to that actually. But the point is that he received two lords. He received Krishna and Balaram, and virtually, you know, visually, there is hardly any difference between the two. Uh, now, 
because I want to kind of a little bit of repetitious uh, presentation. I will tell you an anecdote uh, from Prabhupada's life. It's connected to the fact that at that time Govinda Daisi was traveling with Prabhupada and there was Gurudas who was I think at the time temple president of Delhi. He was also traveling with Prabhupada. And during Prashadam time, I think that was during the time when the, she was singing in all the pandals, pandals and you know, she, it's those beautiful kirtans recorded. Prabhupada paid for her ticket to come to India to sing, and she was the, the anchor, the main person for the all pandals. And Guru Das was also important, he was temple president. So uh, they, <laughs> they had a bit of exchange on, on the Prashadam time, you know. The best philosophy is discussed when you eat prashadam. That's your own. Uh, when when you when you talk uh, and eat some sweets, <laughs> then it becomes even more interesting. So they had an argument. Uh, Gurudas was saying that according to nectar of devotion, Doctor Samarasimha, there is no difference between. Krishna and Balaram, the only difference is the color. And it's written uh, black and white <laughs> in the vector of devotion. And if you check the Sanskrit, it's the same thing. So the same, you know, there is no difference. Two lords are exactly the same, identical. And then the Vinta Dasi said, yes, but look, you know, sorry? Sorry, you want me to say? sorry. I kind of mix it. Why can you make a white and blue with us? Napoli Yamuna. I mixed them up. Sorry. Yeah, it's Yamuna. Thank you for fixing it. Yeah, Yamuna was arguing back. Yeah, because the Vinta Dasi didn't sing so much. She was doing Tulusi. So, uh, yeah, she was the sec first secretary of Rama. Yeah. So Yamuna was, by the way, also on the list of the first species. Her, Govinda Dasi. Uh, then she would argue with Gurudas and say, well, well, just Krishna has his own set of gopis and he's enjoying with his gopis and Balan has his own set of gopis so they're completely different. <laughs> it's like, it's not just a little bit of a difference, it's a big difference. So, um, they, they came to, you know, the argument can go hot, you know, between, it's, a, it's an academic argument, of course, it's not a, it's a, not a serious personal argument. <laughs> There is no personal gain by that argument. But they were trying to get to the point. So then they sent them all Krishna Maharaj, who was at the time GBC for India, or just became GBC for India, I think 1972. Uh, probably that's about that time. And they sent him to Prabhupada to check what's right. Because one place it says it's like exactly the same, and it's obviously not. <laughs> so, uh, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj gives a presentation. He said, uh, one devotee, not, he's not naming the names, you know, like in the longest story, just in the style, he wanted to be neutral. One devotee saying that uh, there is no difference between Krishna and Balaram. And Prabhupada said, yes, that's correct, yes, there is no difference, only the call, yes. And then he said, but another devotee is saying that there is a big difference because Krishna has his own set of gopis and there is a rasa bhas. If you bring Krishna, and next to the uh, Balara, to the Rasa Lila, you cannot do that. That's correct, that's correct, yeah. Prabhupada, I, I want to ask you which is of the two is correct. Uh, and Prabhupada turns to him and says, You don't GBC, you decide. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the Prabhupada's answer to that. But it's actually a very deep philosophical issue here. Because on a Tatva level, there is actually, in a, a Tatva level, there is no difference between two Purushas. They are both almost identical, um, because both are the origin of the universe. Uh, both are coming here as Naranarayan, they are coming here as um, Krishna Balaram. This is all those Purushas. Original Purushas, they are quite, quite well represented in a, as avatars. Ram, Lakshman, and you, you, you continue. 
Nityananda and Chaitanya, they, 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 these are the original Purushas, they come. But um, they act in different ways. You know, like Bhara was not invited when Krishna went to Kutra. Uh, Uddhava was, but Bhara was not. <laughs> yeah. To Akura, because he doesn't have his devotion, is Gyana. It's Dasyaras, and it's mixed with Gyana. So then Krishna Bhagavan can come, it's not a problem. So apparently, you can see that both. Kuja and Akura, they are expressing their love for Krishna. This is what apparent. And they are very intimate, they are massaging his feet, they are giving him ointments. This is like, it looks like real love, real karma, which is uh, now in the end of previous chapter, and that's interesting. I, I found it interesting, I was listening to this lecture with Bhakti Rebao, uh, Burijan was talking about in the previous chapter, he was very interestingly pointing out that in the previous chapter, because of the Vichari Bhav of Danya, Danya in its humility expressed in the uh, behavior, so Danya is not just humility, but it's actually expression of humility by the residents of Vrindavan, both gopis and especially the parents of Krishna. Because they express humility to Uddhava, the apparent the rasa changed into dasya. So when you spread with very mixed humility to uh, Vatsarya or Maturi, then you become like a servant. You, know, like you become dasa. <laughs> and say, Krishna, please come back. You know, I'm begging you. You know, you're not saying, Krishna, come back now. <laughs> Flatter them. It reminds me of the fact that from 1972 up to recently, you know, in Bengal, <laughs> there was a, an atheistic communist government elected. And I was there when elections were happening in the 90s. I remember like 98% vote for Jyoti Bhakshu. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. I mean, you know, everybody just votes for him. And I mean now it's a little bit uh, with uh, Mamata is a little bit better. <laughs> they take they should give a little bit of more favor to devotees. Uh, but in those days it was like 
everything is like no, you don't. And then you get like all these extra holidays. Uh, you know, you have extra holidays plus you have like about same amount of days, just general strike. And that basically means it's a holiday. <laughs> so it's like, like you know, you just say, okay, if you vote for me, you'll get like so many holidays in a year. Everybody likes that. Uh, but uh, but it, it, it's difficult for the voters to be in a situation where they have to be subservient to the authority like that. And the council was the ultimate authority like that. And um, uh, Akura was sent by council. He as the most senior Britain, like the eldest of four generations back, Britain, he was sent to Brindava. And the same authority now confirms that Krishna, and it's important for us, Krishna and Balaram are the original Purushas. Because without understanding that, you may think that <laughs> it is a weird way to look at it, but some, especially I heard maybe Christian preachers and Muslim preachers, they would point out that Krishna is acting as a moral, you know, uh, uh, being, you know, how can you consider him? Yeah, that's what's happening. Somebody came to Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati once and said, a preacher came to Mathura and he was telling everybody that Krishna is immoral because he has so many wives and so many girlfriends and uh, Nobody could defeat him. <laughs> and <laughs> but some society said that's because there were no Utmaji cars there. <laughs> Very typical of what this sentence was like. He would point out to the obvious, you know, they were not just not philosophically advanced to prove, like Akur is proving here, that Krishna and are the original Purushas. They are the uh, Creators of all those little religions which go and, and you know, go in and go out in every little universe. And Sanatana also comes from there, from the breathing of the Purushas. So they're the original. Uh, I and mean, all the souls are in their lives, really. <laughs> it's not, it's, I mean, some souls trying to be little Krishnas, little lords, uh, and that's where the problem of ego and the lust comes. But here is quite different. And as Krishna and Balaram are the origin, and Purusha means man, literally, you know, in, in, in Sanskrit, it means the Purusha is the enjoyer. They're the only enjoyers. Everybody else is this little avatars, little Krishna, Shaktis, Jivas. They are to be meant, meant to be enjoyed. They are not meant to enjoy. So the only out of all the devotees, completely free from the both uh, selfishness of the enjoyer, which is for me, where the copies, and free from uh, uh, basically followers of the jnana shunya bhakti of pure bhakti, which is not contaminated by jnana, which allows love to be expressed freely. Uh, Akrura's prayers are really beautiful, very beautiful Sanskrit. Uh, it's almost Vedic Sanskrit, you know, the, the words he's using, uh, the sentences and uh, written, it's almost like a quote from Rig Veda. Really. But, uh, but still, Gopi's uh, love is higher and more intense. And this is the, I wanted, what I wanted to say, I guess I, I, I can say something more, but I can rather running out of steam. Uh, maybe there's some question or correction of what I just said, because um, I know that if you go longer than 40 minutes, um, then you can hear me, but you don't understand what I'm saying. It's just like, <laughs> isn't it? You're just like, oh yeah, what was it about? <laughs> that's, that's the reality of it. Uh, and that's good, because uh, an average person has a big attention span, 15 minutes. So if you last it for 40 minutes, it means you're like an illegal genius of, the, of this world. Um, any corrections or additions? Yes. Yeah. 
his natural devotional attitude towards um, Krishna. Yes. And, and I'm just preparing that after what you were saying today about the selfishness, because the way I would feel okay. was that his natural attitude was as a servant. Yes. Uh, well, he, 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 I can repeat the question, yes. In the, in the previous report that you read, it says uh, Akrura adopted the nature of devotional attitude towards the Lord. And what I said, that uh, there was an element of selfishness. And what I meant is that in the Kruja's love, there was an element of selfishness. And in the nature of attitude of Akrura, there is an element of adoration or, or, or uh, awe and reverence, as we call it. Uh, and it's uh, connected to the previous verse, and the previous verse is clearly referring to his experience. And actually, he starts from that. He starts from whatever he remembers, just in the chapter 42, you know, just before. Uh, he had this. Uh, Kuntu was also there. Uh, he has this amazing revelation at the Akuragat, all the way at the Akuragat. He saw, <laughs> here is Krishna Balaram, as Narayana Sankarsha, and here is Krishna Balaram, and there are two of them. <laughs> Each one is the one. And he was like, wow. And he saw, the, it's called the Akura's vision, the whole chapter is called the Akura's vision. And the vision of the Kuru God is actually what he starts here. It's the appreciation of Krishna and Balaram, not as cover boys, but as original Purushas. Uh, so that is, in itself, is, for us is important, I said, but it has the ingredient of Gyan in it, because the concept of Purusha is critical to understanding the Vedic construction of the universe, of creation, but doesn't help you in uh, issues of relationship with Krishna to build it on a closer level. The good example will be uh, when Yashoda had heard it. She saw pretty much the same as Akura. No, like she had the universal form. So Akura saw the universal form and the two Purushas. And uh, Yashoda also did that. She looked in the mouth of Krishna because Balaram complained. She looked up in the mouth said, Did you eat the earth? She said, You saw the earth? And all other plants. And inside that, she saw herself looking in the mouth of Krishna. And she was like, Whoops! Krishna, don't do it again. Go back, go back and play. So this, it's the gap is there, the vision is there, the universal form is there, but it's like a little bit of salt in the sweet. It doesn't disturb the sweetness; it increases the sweetness. Whereas a kuru, it's like a big salty bowl, <laughs> and like a core, you know, instead of a sweet, it's, it's a different taste. So that's what, what I was trying to say. I, I, I mean, maybe I didn't go across. So, so clearly, there is a big difference between Akrura and residents of Vrindavan, and there is a conflict between them as well. So, I don't understand that. Yeah. It's a big difference. I still can't see what order of mine is to say there is a huge big Kian aspect. Okay. Because it sounds to me as if he's, in a way, on the same level as the. Uh, um, Okay, well, that's an excellent point. Jnana uh, Shunya Bhakti is present only in the residence of Vrindavan. Residents of Akunda always have the ingredient that, uh, that full realization, constant full realization, and the Ryan that is the Supreme Personality of God, the origin of the universe, the highest being, the origin of everybody of us, and the uh, the Sachi Ananda form, you know, they cannot jump on the, on the shoulders of Narayana and start riding him and say, Hey, can you go left? Because I, I want to 
get those fruits from the tree. That's not their relationship. And, and because of that ingredient of all reverence, which he is, in, in essence, he's in. Well, all reverence, they have different kinds of all reverence, but you know, by yoga or jnana, but jnana or yoga, uh, or through jnana. So those ingredients are uh, not allowing to be selfless. And the, the, the real answer to this is, on Vaikuntha, everybody is after liberation still. Because that's the quality of people and they all not necessarily for Sayujan, but other kinds of liberation. We could remember all the kinds of liberation. Sayujan, you know, uh, and, and there is Sarupya, meaning having the same form as the Lord. Salokya, living on the same planet as the Lord. Sarshti, having all the opulence. So all those liberations are present in Vaikuntha. Uh, and they are the motivation for the for the residents of Vaikuntha, but not the motivation for the residents of Vaikuntha. They not, don't want even liberation. Same as Vidura uh, Uddhava. They don't want that in Bhagavad So that element of selflessness is present only in those who are very close. To, that, that's what my point was. I don't know if I explained it sufficiently, but maybe that's it. She was liberated at the time. Yes. At the time. Well, at the time, she, well, well touched her. Immediately she got liberation from all material desires. She didn't have material desires anymore, but she had lust for him. You know, that was, and that's a, that's a paradox of a little bit situation. <laughs> because she was selfish and uh, but wanted only liberation. So that's, that's a unique person, a Kuja. There is a whole story in Babisha Puran about Kuja, and she was actually the little girl without a nose <laughs> in the Ramadi land, you know, like one cuts off the nose. So now she comes with the tree uh, to form in this incarnation, and Krishna fixes it and says, okay, last incarnation, we had some disagreement, and this time it's okay. <laughs> I don't have that restriction anymore. <laughs> So that's, that's, you know, it's not in Bhagavad but it's in a different Purana, so Kupta. And there is there are quite a few different things we kind of puzzle about Kupta, because in one place it says that she's in connection with Bhushakti, Hira Shakti, which is uh, the potency of the Lord for knowledge. And in another place, Vishnu Chakravarti, just two verses before, she says she's in connection of Rukmi in Vrindavan. So, uh, <laughs> hard to figure it out, but it's quite interesting. And it's, it's good to be philosophical about that, because otherwise your mind goes like, wow, Kuja. It's like, just, you know, like ordinary person's mind just, they can take copies, okay, they can go with the 1,000. It's okay, uh, but Kruja, this is not a problem. <laughs> but it's, it's really serious illustration for the fact that gods are completely selfless, and that's real love, and that's Kama Praya, meaning the reflection of love. That's not real uh, because it's, it looks like, it forms like, it acts like, but it's not. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not real yeah, Kama Rupa Bhakti love, uh, not, not real Prema. It's actually it's not even. It's not. It's just the beginning of Baba <laughs> in her case. But she got full mercy because Krishna was there, and better than being the Moshe. <laughs> Same as Akura, Akura 
stories. Somebody said in a the lecture that Akura was, according to Puranas, Akura was the the Daksha. You know, like Daksha had two births in the Bhagavad the seventh kind, the fourth kind, and now it's again as Daksha having it. And again, he has a problem with the audience. <laughs> Cursed by the obvious, and uh, so the same situation happens. But you know, he's the direct disciple of Sankarshan in both cases. You know, like Daksha is very, very, very senior, uh, but uh, there is a problem there. Uh, anyway, I don't know, I, I, I maybe uh, I said something which is too much, you know, maybe not, not too, too. To clear, I was trying to be clear in the beginning. I even bent with a slower speed to present everything in the proper uh, in English, unlike other languages. The slower you speak, the more you are understood, and you have to put those mental commas everywhere. And I, you know, my punctuation when I speak is just gone completely. It's just the the Double chat, you know, a really fast one, you know, to understand what I think. <laughs> so it's not not necessarily very clear. So please forgive me for that. Grand Darshan Bhagavad Gita, Shri Prabhupada Gita, Chaitanya.